we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Hello, glory be to God Almighty. You're welcome to the narrowest Christ for all nations. Let us pray. King of kings, it has pleased you that a time like this to come. It did not come by accident and we believe that you are very much in charge of the world and in charge of the church. We ask Almighty God that you will reign, that you will take absolute control over every situation of our lives. Today, Lord God, we ask that you speak to us and open our eyes to the wiles of the devil. Open our eyes to see the depth of deception and give us true understanding. Lord, empower me to speak your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Please, in case you have not subscribed to this channel, try to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Hosanna E. E. David. And don't forget to share this video with your friends. We encourage you to also support our ministries so that we can keep our ministry going and also have enough to fund our charity organization. And the good Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we're talking about ministers with seared conscience. The test is 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believed and know the truth. Ministers with seared conscience. In the time of old, during the times of the prophets, in the Old Testament there were false prophets. Even in Egypt, there were magicians, people with secret acts, and they were able to replicate many of the signs that God gave to Aaron and Moses to perform. They used dark powers to do it. And because of that, the heart of Pharaoh was hardened. I know also that God said he would harden his heart. But even the government of Egypt, those in charge, they had their hearts hardened. In the time of Jeremiah, Hosea, Amos, Joel, many of these prophets, Isaiah, there were many false prophets. Who used to tell these people, the kings, the people, the children of Israel, what they want to hear and they were opposing God's will openly then there was a very high morality in our society people weren't going naked people weren't prostituting as they do today even though I know that there were some barbaric laws and practices people were carrying out then but the truth is that the prostitute of those days in Old Testament time is well dressed than most married women today. That is the truth. I'm only trying to tell us how old religious corruption is. It has been very, very old. And until we know how deep it has eaten into 
a society and into the church, we may not be able to discern correctly. We are in a battle. We are in a war. We are fighting a battle and it is a battle of the Lord. It is a battle between light and darkness. Let's look at this topic. Ministers with seared conscience. In those days when they want to brand an animal, they would put a hot iron, it could be a knife, it could be an iron, into the fire and when it is red hot, they bring it and they use it to brand it and they put a mark so that when the wound is healed, the mark will be there for identification. Then to see a conscience means to deaden it, to kill the conscience. That is what it means to see a conscience. So when you see people burying their fellow human beings in church altars and foundations before the church building is laid, when you see human sacrifice, when you see people that are being molested, when you see the height of wickedness that is being performed by some of these so-called prophets and ministers, I want you to always remember 1 Timothy 4, 1, 2, 3. That these people have a seared conscience. A conscience that is dead. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, now, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, the spirits of Satan, demonic spirits, and they will listen to the doctrines they will give heed to the doctrines of devils speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience set with a hot iron. Now let me tell you, in the spirit reign, in the kingdom of darkness, according to a former Satanist, evangelist Mrs. Grace Onijaka, formerly known as Grace, Sister Grace Iwerri, she said there is a satanic ritual that perform before you can attain some level of promotion in the kingdom of darkness they have to pass you through a process it is a procedure that they will bring a hot iron they will put it in a fire it will be very very red hot and then they would they will pierce the iron through your heart that that process killed some of them and if you survive it you will be in prison and you will never be released until the Antichrist appears on earth then these are the people that are going to torture humans who refuse to take the mark of the beast and those and enslave those who accept the mark of the beast i tell you the truth the church of today is in a battle that the church has never faced before i have no apology but i want to say this without any iota of apology some of those who are the powerful prophets i'm not saying there are no genuine powerful prophets of god who are known internationally that's not what i'm saying so don't misunderstand me but i'm saying some of the powerful prophets and ministers of god are occult members i know exactly what i'm telling you 
if you have been pursued before, if the ones you respected have pursued you and want you dead and pursue you in your dream and want nothing but you going down to the grave at all costs, they don't care, then you will know that the church is not what you think it is. I want parents. Don't expose your children. If your children are doing very well, don't expose them in church. If your children can speak in tongues, if they see visions, if your children prophesy, if your children have gold dreams, don't expose them. Because there are occult men, witches, wizards, who are parading themselves as men of God. Uh, recently, I was told of a small boy whom I was very angry with the mom. The grandmom some time ago, I called the grandmom, I told her that this thing you are doing is wrong. Stop exposing this boy. That was some years ago. That boy now steals he steals and is even fornicating. He's becoming uncontrollable. A young boy who was being called, oh man of God, pastor, 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 pastor. Even had uh, pastoral uh, clerical ways. Parents, stop exposing your children. I remember some years ago, I think that was 2000. Yeah, 2002 or 2001, between 2000 and 2002, I went to a man of God to tell him some of my dreams. So I traveled from the community I was staying to go and meet him. And when I got there, instead of me to tell him why he booked the appointment for me, I was telling me about other things. And then he said, well, let's pray, let's pray. And we prayed and I left. I never knew that God was in control. Some years later, after I got my Holy Ghost baptism, the Lord opened my eyes and showed me that this man is a wizard. And I was kind of, so God, you saved me. I have seen men of God, when you tell them how great your future is, they become your problem. I remember, I think around 90, uh, I think year 2000 or 1999. So uh, there was this girl who wanted to die uh, in um, New Year Eve. So, no, it was not in, not in the 90s. It was early 2000 because then I already started junior high school. She wanted to die and she was saying in a local language she was screaming and manifesting and then i said what is she saying what is chelimu they said she's saying wait for me wait for me wait for me i want to come and then they told me that she says that it's time for her to leave the earth so i i we had to take her to the vestry a vestry is a room that is built and attached to the church we have ministers of god and the choristers uh, put their clothes and it's like a dressing room and where people can go and rest. So I went there. We took her there. I conducted deliverance for her. And then some days later, the man of God asked me to preach. And I preached. Do you know that drove me from that church? These two events drove me from that church. That man of God was pursuing me in my dream. He wanted me dead at all costs. I was just a young boy. He pursued me and made sure that he killed me. But he has died for like over 10 years now. His legs were swollen. They said his legs were swollen and that he confessed to witchcraft and the evil things he did before he died. Be wise, Christians. There are many who have seared conscience. Uh, it pains me when I see Christians who go before those they haven't tested their spirits. 
and they they they, they worship them kneel down they tell them open your mouth they open their mouth they put something in your mouth swallow it you swallow it something is wrong with your head the bible says test every spirit you haven't tested the spirit of the person and you go and obey every little instruction let me shock you do you know that there are lots of sacrifices i mean human sacrifices that go on in many of these churches every year people die because they must service the altars they took this power from listen it is easier for a fake man of god to take the life of his church member than for an occult man who has a shrine who worships satan to kill someone because you come before these people you have no it doesn't even cross your mind that this person is harmful i saw in the news headline recently i think last week this past week of a pastor who killed his own member i think last month i saw something like that too he was sleeping with a member and killed the member in nigeria so many terrible things happening but most christians are blind you can't help the poor in your community you haven't given to your local church but you can gather thousands of dollars and fly to another country for deliverance i'm not saying it is wrong but people are too desperate for power and many of those you go to the milk you of your finances the waste your time sometimes they use demonic powers to heal you and by using the a withdrawal spirit they take one problem from you and give you a bigger one and then if you are not lucky they use you for ritual i don't want to mention anybody but let me tell you some years ago we see a popular nigerian actress coming up to say that a man of god slept with her she was dating a man of god the man of god was giving us so much money and then she started having problems she discovered that it's like some rituals were perform performed on her and she raised alarm and she said if i die hold this man of god accountable it's happening it is happening there are men with seared conscience who are parading themselves around as men of god i can't arrest them but i can raise alarm and tell you to be careful find god for yourself repent of your sins and stop looking for shortcuts to victory over your problems if you cannot find god for yourself you will suffer in the hands of these people many have been sacrificed many have been sacrificed you see people even boasting with names of demons names that are not names of god they are not the names of angels they are not the titles of god they are not the names of jesus neither the titles of jesus nor the holy spirit and people are sharing them up people saying i have this power i have so so power i have this power i have not used this power i have not even touched this one this is the one i'm seeing used. and people are happy and they are making mockery of the church when are we going to be wise how can we believe in in these dangerous times and some people choose to be blind oh you need solution to your problem i i i why don't you go before a witch doctor that is known because you will be careful how can you go to church
church and get initiated into the kingdom of darkness in church and you have no problem with it let me tell you i was um i think i should get that book okay i'm gonna do a video about that i will post a video on eagle i open a global outreach i don't have that my book here i was writing the revelation god gave me down about people who go who go to first prophets he said if they have been genuine if they have been genuine children of god they wouldn't have gone before first prophets but they will go because they themselves they are rebels and because they are rebels because majority of humans even majority of those who say they are christians and we know they are not because they don't obey the master of the kingdom because they have abandoned the lord and abandoned the truth these false prophets are god's judgment against them they are judgment upon these people because they have hardened their heart because they failed to recognize the true god god has given them up and has permitted the spirit of a strong delusion that they should be led astray so that they can reap the reward of their wickedness if not we cannot have a world where one third about one third of world's populations are christians yet we make little so little impact on earth it's painful look at matthew chapter 24 verse 24 for these for there shall arise for christ first christ and first prophets and they and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect let me tell you the bible says they shall perform great signs and wonders i i laugh at those who say that uh all the miracles are fake all the, no all the miracles are not fake you haven't seen power when you see things that are happening before your very eyes you won't say they are fake all of them are not fake but i tell you many of them are arranged some of these prophecies are arranged it's just a drama i'm not against prophecy god speaks to me too i've given messages that have come to pass by the grace of god so i'm not against prophecies but I'm against deception and using demonic powers to deceive people. Some of these miracles are real. They have power. The Bible says they shall, from the very lips of Jesus, he said they shall perform great signs and wonders. Great, great signs and wonders they will perform. To deceive the very elect. How would they perform great signs and wonders if they have no supernatural power? Let me tell you. There are many today who care nothing about the truth. But they are building empires everywhere. And they have made up their minds that they are candidates of hell. They know that they are going to hell. Some of those you call your prophets, some of those you kneel before and you bow to and you, they give you anything, you eat and drink. I tell you, many of them feed on human blood in their covens. Many of them are occult members. And this is why they can go to the, the lengths you see them going to perform evil. Well, let me tell you something that will shock you. Do you know that these people are so influential that many politicians believe so much in them. They give a lot of powers to politicians, to judges, to different calibers of people in the society. And when their issue come up, you can't even get justice. How can someone take their children to church and a child will get lost in church and there are CCTV cameras everywhere. 
and the man of God will not be able to produce the videos, the live recording, the documentation of what happened. And the police will be complacent. Listen, and these people, they do charity. Everybody praises them. You dare not even say anything against them online. They will come after you. They have internet soldiers. They pay people. You say something, they will fight you. After all, there is poverty everywhere. So if you see someone that puts you on allowance and tells you to have different accounts, up to 10 social media accounts, and begin to comment on people who talk bad at your pastor, they do it. They have internet armies because they want to protect the work of their master, Satan, the devil. They give to news medias. They donate to the society. But inwardly, they are ravenous wolves. I don't know how you will live in your life. This is a warning to you and to me too because some people have risen like me before in times past and they fell some of them got carried away let me tell you one thing i'd rather die than fall and oppose the god of heaven and earth i'd rather die now than oppose him because i know that a terrible day is coming I know when you stand for the truth, when you are vocal, they come after you, but that's none of my business. Everybody will die. Every single one of us will die. And, and, and I don't believe in dying young. Whenever God calls you home, you go. Christians just die. Christians, we don't die. We only cross to the other, other side, the other side of eternity. We don't die. He who believes in me will never die. He who dies and believes in me will live again. But if you are alive and you believe, you will never die. You will only be called to glory. You, we don't die. A temporary separation from the flesh, from the body is not death. That's not death. The real death is hell. Christ is Jesus is the truth. The way and the life. He has come. He has given us his life. And so long as I live. I will live for the truth. It doesn't matter what happened. I will speak the truth. Nobody can take it from me. The gospel message. Is bigger than our lives. And we will defend it at all cost. I will not allow. I will not keep quiet when i see blind people following blind leaders and they are all entering the pit the bottomless pit i will not keep quiet because there is a sin of commission and there is a sin of omission revelation chapter 13 verse 14 and deceived them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast so they have power this is about the end time the antichrist but i tell you that the spirit of antichrist is already in the world and they are everywhere they are everywhere let me tell you why is it that those who can see the amount of money in your wallet the amount of your balance your bank account balance they can tell you everything they can tell you your the name of your village they can tell you everything but sin does not irritate them they accommodate every kind of sinful person oh the church you will tell me the church is like a hospital jesus christ came for sinners yes but he called sinners he is a friend of sinners not to keep sinners in their sins not to encourage neither to encourage them in their sins but that they might come to repentance so if you see a man of god who is a friend of sinners who is a friend of corrupt politicians but cares nothing 
about their sinful state. If he cares nothing about their perishing, then he is not of God. As a believer, as a child of God, as a man of God, if you see, for instance, if you see someone who is a scammer, even if he's sharing money to people, the money he has irritates you. But these people, they claim to be powerful, but they cannot use that same power to transform a single sinner into a saint. I know nobody can convert uh, another person, but you as a man of God, your lifestyle alone is a message. There are lots of people who give their lives to Christ just because of your lifestyle. You may not necessarily open your mouth to preach first before, before people start repenting. You are the light of the world. So you see those people, they are friends of politicians. I'm not saying it's wrong to be a friend to a politician. There are many good politicians. Sorry, they have, uh, there are a few politicians. There are not many anymore. There are a few politicians that are good. Not many. Sorry. But they befriend even the corrupt people. Look at the church in Nigeria. The politicians go to church. They donate money. And nobody talks to them. <laughs> they get away with all the evil they do. How? <sighs> the corruption is deep. If they have the spirit of God, why is it that the, the evil doesn't irritate them? Why is it that they have no problem relating with evil people and not even correcting them? Because they are part of the problem. If they are not part of the problem, they should be vocal. You, if you are in the dark, and you have no light, you are a part of the darkness. And you can't condemn the darkness. Look at the buildings, cathedrals people are building. Run, they run into millions of dollars. Millions. I'm not again saying that it's wrong to be the cathedral. But in a place where there is so much corruption and in this end time if you see ministers of God who have thousands of followers who have millions of followers and they care nothing about the truth they don't confront these evil people who are keeping our nations under perpetual poverty those who breed and and maintain corruption if they cannot confront them if they can tell them the truth yet they have cathedrals they have churches with hundreds of thousands of people worshiping under the same roof under one roof or in different branches i mean members in total their christianity is questionable you claim to raise dead people but Almost all your church members are spiritually dead. You claim to make people millionaires, but almost all your church members, if not all of them, are spiritually poor and blind, like the members of the Laodicean church. That's sad. I remember a vision God gave me some time ago. I saw a large church with only I think about two or three people in the church and the Lord told me this is how scarce holy people are we are the church is deprived of holy men of God hardly you see someone being introduced as this is a holy man of God what we hear is this is a powerful man of God this is a highly anointed man of God but travel and leave your wife for that highly anointed man of God. They will multiply your wife. Your wife will become pregnant 
within six months or three months of leaving your wife with them or leaving your daughter with them. This is sad. This is evil ongoing. Many of these people have no conscience. Their conscience is dead. Unfortunately, they hold many of the justice of those who are supposed to give justice to the common man. Their grip upon them is so, is so strong that they can get away with almost any kind of evil. People can get missing in their church. And, not, and there's nothing you can do about it. Little or nothing you can do about it. I'm not just talking about Nigerian churches. I'm talking about churches all over the world. This evil is not, is, is not, is not restricted to some geographical locations alone. It is worldwide. But the problem is that it is prevalent in some places. Look at John 3, 2. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Oh, look at the testimony. Except God be with him. And this is it. When they perform these miracles, they say, if not for God, how can this happen? Listen, the same things that God said, by these signs, people will know that you are my disciples. Satan fakes all of them. He fakes holiness. He fakes miracles. He tries to prove to people and deceive people by displaying some of the signs that accompany the true children of God. Please let us be wise. The days are evil. Don't let your God down because someone says, I'm a man of God. Do not close your eyes. Because someone says, I'm a servant of God. Because someone gave you a prophecy and it came to pass, does it mean that he's a genuine man of God? Because there are many spirits. Remember Acts 16. The slave girl who was telling people, oh, these are the true genuine men of God who are telling you, showing you the true way of God. These are the true children of God. Who are showing us a way of righteousness. And she did that for many days. What she was saying wasn't wrong. But the spirit in her. The spirit of clairvoyance. The spirit of the, with which she used to see visions. Wasn't of God. It was the demon in her. I've said it several times and I want to say it again. Many of those who were possessed before they repented, after their repentance, convert that same spirit into a useful one to work for God. But God will never accept that kind of service. Except you worship God in spirit and in truth. No. You will, your service is not acceptable and you will burn in hell. Except you worship God in spirit and in truth. I have this to say before I run this message out. Learn how to pray for yourself. Read the word of God for yourself. Do not get too attached to any man of God. Get attached to Jesus Christ. Don't trust people too much. Always test the spirits of anyone who says I'm a man of God. Because many evil spirits have gone out into the world, including the spirit of Antichrist and lying spirits. 
you have gone out into the world. And let me tell you this. If you have been so faithful to your pastor, anything they tell you, you do it. Even if you don't have money to pay your children's school fees, you could still go and borrow money to give to your pastor. Go and reassess, reassess that relationship because there are many Christians who are under bewitchment. They are under bewitchment, but they think that they are rendering service to God with faith. That's not faith. You have been caged. Some of you have been caged. Your soul, your spirit has been locked up. Anything they tell you, you do it. You have no fear of God in your heart. You don't fear God, but you fear your pastor. You are living under bewitchment. That's not Christianity. It's time to turn to the true God. It's time to repent. Stop following those who have no conscience. How many of you will open your eyes to do business with a hardened criminal? But what if that hardened criminal comes to you and you do not know that they are criminals? If they come to you with pastoral clerical regalia and they quote scriptures and they tell you deep things about your life, will you not let your guard down? You will definitely do. If you see a witch doctor come to you with your uh, regalia, I mean traditional words, and they tell you that you should kneel down and close your eyes and raise your hands up and open your mouth because they want to put something in your mouth. Will you do it? But if someone comes in clerical uniform, you do it. Even without checking who they are. You could just go to church and see a minister that is invited and and you you want to go you go there with your children hey man of god lay hands on my children lay hands on my children some of them are gay some of them are lesbians some of them are into bestiality some of them sleep with little children and they lay the hands of immorality up on, on the heads of your children and transfer demons to your children you don't know the man of god but you bring your innocent children men of god touch your head touch your <laughs> and when your children are not doing well you complain you say but i i brought them up in the way of the lord why don't you train them to rely on god remember this is christianity the veil that separated the court where the people worship from the Holy of Holies have been removed. So you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a priest, not just a priest of God, but a royal priesthood. You can access God. Don't let anybody deceive you that it is only their prayers that can work for you that if you pray your prayers can go to heaven so they need to release declaration about upon your life i'm not saying there are no men of god whom god have anointed there are people god have given that grace but you too god can answer your prayer if you live a holy life stop living in sin so that you can break free from the shackles of these wicked people who call themselves men of God. Many of them have no conscience anymore. They are ready to go to hell. But they want to enjoy their lives very well. 2000 and 2007. Yes. 2007. When God, when I was, I stopped going to church. That's a long story. I don't want to go into that where i actually repented and stopped questioning god especially about the church why the church is so corrupt i had a lot of problems i had a lot of confusion and i told god i need explanation if you want me to work for you explain to me why 
Why are there so much evil? So many wicked men of God around. Wizards on your altars. Wizards everywhere. With only few people who have the fear of God. Let me tell you, there are more men of God that are possessed with demons. You can say, who is this one talking? If you fail to follow your Bible, if you continue to follow these people, you will end up in hell. And you will remember this thing I'm saying now. But I pray for you that the grace of God will save you. But if you say, who is this stupid man? How dare you say that? I know what I'm telling you. 2007, there was this pastor. God asked me to go and work with in another state. So I went to that state. I told him I was working with him. I stayed there for some months. And before I left there, they invited a prophet who ministered in one of the communities, one of the towns where we were setting up a church. So we went there for revival. It was an all night service. And there was no hotel for him. So after the all night, we closed around like f between four, five o'clock, between four and five. And we needed to rest till like seven, on, like after six or seven before we go to where we were staying. And there was this small girl who was an underage. She was eloping with her boyfriend. And they came to our house. But the pastor said, well, you can't sleep here. We are going for, or everyone is going for an all night. So you have to come and join us. So this young man, a youth with this girl who was around like 15, 16 years. So they came they attended the all night, but after that, they, we all, after the all night, everybody was tired. We slept in the living room, including the invited guest. We all slept there. Do you know that? Even right there, in the same living room. I was with other people. He forced the young girl and slept with her in that living room. Do you know the mistake the pastor made? He gave me money. He said, the, because the owner of the house, of the apartment, heard the sound. And he knew what happened. I, I never knew anything. Because I was dead asleep. So... The pastor, uh, I was on that said, okay, uh, uh, these people, they want to destroy this branch we are setting up over there. Uh, take this money, go and give to them. They can't come here. Let, tell them to go. So I went there. I gave them the money and they were telling me the story. They said the prophet, the guest preacher slept with her. I took my time and I investigated the issue. I saw the t-shirt she wore is is kind of woolen the the marks of the prophet's hands that was pulling her dress is still there because the dress is stretchy. She told me how the prophet almost tore her on this, and the young man told me he was hearing the sound. He was hearing the noise. I want to stop there. This is someone who was jumping up and down. Jumping and laying at some people and people were falling, giving prophecies. That same night, he forced a young girl. If it had been now, I would have sued that man of God to court. Yes, I would have done it. There is a case I was investigating recently, some months ago, about one of these children in our charity organization that a mom knew about it, 16-year-old girl, 
who was sleeping with the mother's boyfriend. I was so angry. How could you do this? A mother, a child, we are trying to make sure she becomes somebody tomorrow. A child I've been paying her school fees for the past eight years. You could do this. I was so angry. The truth is that it was God who told me. He told me not to go into arrest. If not, I was ready to arrest the mom and arrest the man. I already got, I was gathering my evidence. God told me no and he gave me reasons. Don't do it. He told, gave me reasons. He said, don't do it. I had to obey. If that time had been now, that prophet would have gone to jail. So much evil going on. And some of you come online to defend these wicked people. These people that have no conscience. You defend them. Let me tell you one thing. One day, you and your mouth, you will stand and your hands you use in typing comments. Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. The mouth and the hands you use in defending fake prophets, you will use that mouth and that hand to appear before the Lord and you will give accounts. I'm doing my job. This is why I was sent into this world. Please be faithful to your God. Live a holy life so that these people will not prey on you. So that you don't become their prey. You don't become their victim. Let us pray. God, open our eyes. Day after day, let us know the truth. So that we can follow you all the days of our lives. King of kings, the Lord of lords. Lead us in the path of righteousness. Don't leave us alone. We pray that your power and your spirit, your glory, will shine in the church and outshine every darkness. This is our war. The victory belongs to you, God. And all this nonsense will come to an end when you appear to judge the earth and the wicked people and the false prophet, the antichrist, the devil, the ancient serpent, all those and all those who are being used against your kingdom. Lord, we pray that you help your children to overcome. Those who are turning your church upside down, Lord, disgrace them. I pray for your true ministers all over the world. Protect them. This is my prayer all the time. Lord, be with them in all their calamities. It's not been easy. Be with them. Provide for them. Provide for them. Because they have been deprived in many ways. People no longer believe the truth. People now choose to believe lies and deception. Lord, help us. I pray for as many who have been supporting this ministry that you open the windows of heaven and release your blessings upon their lives. Lord, because they support the truth, may your goodness never depart from their lives. Because they build the kingdom, Lord, help them to enter the kingdom. Help them in times of need. Help them to overcome their weaknesses. Thank you, Lord. Pray for our nations. Lord, take absolute control. Satanism is growing at a geometric progression. Lord, help us to overcome in this world of darkness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. Please share this video with someone. It's going to open the eyes of someone. Share this video and subscribe to this channel. The narrow is Christ for all nations. We appreciate those who have been given to support our ministries. Please continue to support us. It is what you give we use in sustaining and running our ministries and also finance our charity organization. Please do well to support us and the good Lord will bless you in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you and God bless you.
We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website, www.hosannadavid.com. Email us at info at hosannadavid.com. God bless you.